I've already mentioned that the energy stored in the nucleus is far greater than the energy uh, through chemistry. An atomic uh, weapon, pound for pound, is, is much more intense, releases much more energy than, uh, than an equivalent amount of TNT, an equivalent weight. And so where does that energy come from? Well, I've talked about nuclear reactions, but I didn't talk about what causes them. And it's a tendency, well, we've talked about electrons always want to return to their lowest state in an orbit, the lowest orbital, well, uh, the nucleus wants to return to its lowest state possible too. And, well, here's how it works. If I take, this doesn't really happen very often this way, usually it's a combination of, it's more of a combination of processes, but this is very simplified. If I take hydrogen isotope, uh, deuterium. It's got one proton and one neutron, so the nucleon number is two. I take two of them and I smash them hard enough together. And I have the material to form, let's see, there'd be a two on the bottom. That would be helium, and that would have four protons. I'd form helium. Now, similar processes uh, occur in the sun. They, they turn the hydrogen in the sun, convert it to helium, and that's what powers the sun. And that's what gives off lots of radiation. It produces gamma rays and other particles. A gamma ray had to come from somewhere. And where it came from was it took some of the mass out of this and converted it into energy. It turns out mass is, you don't want to say frozen energy any more than you want to say that the hydrogen burns and creates helium. The hydrogen fuses together and forms helium. These two protons that don't like to be together uh, uh, protons and neutrons, the two protons are forced together uh, under, what, 15 million kelvins of temperature, like you know, 25,000 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 billion atmospheres of pressure in the center of the sun. They're forced together to where they get into one nucleus and they create helium. It turns out to be more stable. To do that, they have to give up some of their mass. Mass is a, is a form of energy. And when it's converted into energy, it moves at the speed of light. And you get this equation. Energy is mass times the speed of light squared. So you look at a mass, if you can convert it completely into energy, this is how you would do it. When I go from uh, one form to a more stable form in a reaction, I'm actually giving off some energy. If you look at this chart, and it's kind of hard to understand this chart, I know, but this is the... Uh, this is the nucleon number. We're getting up to, into bigger elements as we move this way. And this is called a, the binding energy, energy per nucleon. And what happens is, if I go from, pro, from a proton, there's one, and as I, as I fuse objects together, moving in this direction, I'm fusing objects together to make bigger elements. As I do that, I give up energy. So the, so the amount of energy per mass goes, well, actually, the amount of energy per mass goes down. The binding energy uh, is going to increase. But what happens is I'm going to a more stable state. So I'm giving up energy by doing this. I'm getting more and more stable as I move up, up, up until right about here. This is right about nickel or iron 56. Uh, the, isotope of iron. Beyond iron, I, I don't get any more stable. And so stars will fuse and fuse and fuse, and they'll fuse all the way up to iron. Now, to get out here, where the, the gold and silver in your teeth are, or the platinum in your, uh, in your wedding band, or zinc, copper, all these heavier things, to get out here, you have to put energy into the system, not pull it out. So out here, mass is converted, energy is converted back into mass. Here I'm fusing, I'm converting uh, mass into energy, and I'm getting more stable. Now I have to smash these things together so hard that the energy of their collision is converted into mass. So creating everything heavier in iron is unstable. I'm actually, well, like I said, I'm taking energy and converting it into mass. And that is, after it's formed, all these products are going to want to go that way. They all want to go towards iron, the most stable of all the elements. This process here 
joining together to get there is fusion. This process out here is fission. And these products naturally decay. It's radioactive decay. These products tend to have to have something happen to force them to do it. Okay, you have to have conditions like in the sun. So, let's say, um, let's take, let's take a, a uranium, I guess. Let's take some uranium, for example. Put an example over here. I've got U-235. It's uh, the more fissionable, the unstable, the most un well, the more unstable, more common unstable uh, isotope of uranium. So you have to isolate it from U-238, which is quite a process. All right, and uh, let's take um, let's take five kilograms. That's about ten pounds. I think that's more than they use in the bombs. Now, I want to know. A, how much energy will I get out of that? Now, this isn't the mass that I'll get it out of. When I, uh, when we fission, when we go through the fission process for U-235, uh, only about, only about a tenth of a percent or a thousandth of the mass is converted into energy. So let's say this is M1. Let's call this mass 2. Mass 2 is 0 0.001 mass 1, which is 0 0.001 times 5 kilograms, which is 0 0.005 kilograms. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm only converting 0 0.005 kilograms, or 5 grams, into energy. This is... I don't know, this is probably 30 grams. So maybe I'm taking this cap right here and I'm converting it all into energy. Let's see how much energy we get. Let's see. The energy is mass times the speed of light squared. Very similar to kinetic energy, one half the mass times the velocity squared, which is 0 0.005 kilograms times 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That's the speed of light in a vacuum. And that's squared. I get 4.50 times 10 to the 14th joules. Let's see. Let me make sure that's right. Yep, that's true. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means it's 45, 450 trillion joules, but what's that do for you? So, let's try this. B, what's the energy equal to in terms of tons, the energy equivalent of tons of TNT? And I'll tell you that one ton of TNT, and that's like, um, I got a, Pickup truck is usually about a half a ton pickup truck, you know, Ford Ranger or so. So it holds about a half a ton. So imagine filling up a pickup truck full of TNT and then getting another pickup truck and filling that full of TNT. You know that one or two or one or two sticks will remove a pretty large sized tree stump. So imagine what a pickup truck load would do. I mean, it's pretty devastating. So one TN, ton of TNT releases four times 10 to the ninth, about, about four billion joules of energy. So, better circle it. So the energy released is 4.50 times 10 to the 14th joules. And this is a conversion. I know that one ton of TNT is equivalent to 4 times 10 to the 9 joules. The joules cancel, so I'll get the equivalent of tons of TNT. So that's uh, uh, 
That's about 1.13 times 10 to the 5 tons of TNT. That's over 100,000 tons of TNT. That's 200,000 pickup trucks full of TNT. And all I'm doing is I'm converting this much mass into energy.